India's daily new COVID cases are less than 3 lakh after a long span of 26 days. And he, in conversation with us today at ET Now is the man who predicted that the COVID cases will be on a declining trend in the month of uh, May. By mid-May is when the Sutra model of uh, uh, Professor Manindra Agarwal had uh, predicted that cases will see a decline in the country. So can we safely say that the worst is behind us? Joining us now now on ET Now is Professor Agarwal. Professor Agarwal, appreciate you taking your time out and speaking with us today at ET Now. This is Ruchi Bhatia. I remember speaking with you almost a month back and that's when you told us uh, that the infections will go down if we continue to maintain COVID appropriate behavior. So can now one safely say that the worst is behind us and if you can also talk to us about the states that have already showing a trend of peaking. Yeah, uh, firstly, I would just want to also acknowledge uh, my co-authors in this Sutra model, uh, Professor Vidya Sagar and General Kanitka. So three of us uh, are all joint author of this model. Uh, according to our model, indeed, uh, we uh, were expected to peak in the middle of May, and that has indeed seems to be happening from 13th May active cases are dropping very rapidly. And uh, from the looks of it, and also from what our model is showing very clearly, that uh, we are now on the way down, which means that uh, the worst is indeed over. Uh, of course, that is not to say that all states are in the same boat. Uh, there are many states where the peak has been crossed, certainly Maharashtra, Uttar Pradesh, Madhya Pradesh, Gujarat, Rajasthan, Bihar, a whole bunch of states in northern India, Haryana. Punjab has just crossed the peak. Uh, Jammu and Kashmir has just crossed the peak. However, uh, there are some states which still remain of concern. Uh, Tamil Nadu, for example, it is still climbing up. Uh, West Bengal, again, still climbing up. And uh, some other states in North State where we, that started very late in uh, their infection rise. So some of them are still climbing up. But uh, most of the Indian states are on their way down, which is a very good sign. Oh, absolutely. This will be music to the ears of a lot of us who are really stuck at home. But uh, Professor Agrawal, if I can ask you, uh, while we are seeing uh, lower numbers, uh, uh, many are questioning the testing that is being seen in various states as well. The test numbers have gone down significantly in a lot of states. So how is the model factoring all uh, these, uh, you know, these kind of issues, the fact that the tests are much lower and if we start testing a lot more, are we likely to see some sort of uh, discrepancies going forward in the model? Well, surely if uh, the more we test, the more cases we will find. And uh, it's also very true that what gets detected and reported is only a subset of the actual number of cases. Uh, what our model does is it hmm. explicitly acknowledges that what we detect and report is a small subset of the actual reality. And it tries to estimate by what factor is it a smaller version. Now, whenever this factor changes significantly, which will happen if testing strategy changes dramatically, it will get uh, reflected in our model as what we call is a phase change. That means the parameter values have changed. And when we detect a phase change, we take uh, the model takes appropriate measure. There is a, about a week, 10 days time that it takes for parameter values to stabilize. And then it recomputes the parameter values, including that ratio between the reported versus actual cases. And that's how the model, uh, with some time lag, is able to adjust itself to change in testing behavior or other changes imposed. For example, a lockdown brings about a change in some parameter value. So it again model adjusts itself to and factor that in. 
Professor Agarwal, now there are also concerns emanating. In fact, the government itself is talking about, uh, about a third wave that could be looming large. So how does your model factor those concerns as well? Uh, well, that's something that we are not yet uh, bringing into the model because it's still very far away into the future. You know, our estimate is that uh, by the time second wave is over, a significant uh, percentage of Indian population will acquire natural immunity after having been infected and cured. And that immunity will last for a few months at the least, the, which will protect us against a incoming third wave but like i said it will only last for a few months so in that intervening period if we ramp up our vaccination to make up for that reduction in natural immunity and replace it with the vaccine induced immunity we will be in a position to guard ourselves against the third wave third wave or a new strain of virus uh, will come uh, it's inevitable the only question is how intense or how damaging it will be. And that is up to us. If we can ensure proper vaccination, and uh, even before that, if we as a uh, community can ensure uh, COVID appropriate behavior continues, then we will be in a much better position to face that third wave. Professor Agrawal, you're saying that the worst is, you know, behind us and there are many states that are reporting uh, the fact that they're peaking so far. We're seeing the numbers in terms of urban centers much more in control, but the concern now seems to be shifting towards rural areas as well. So talk to us about how does the Sutra model uh, factor these concerns that are emanating now from the rural areas? Yeah, so as I explained, uh yeah, as you very rightly said that uh, the pandemic is now rapidly spreading into the rural areas where of course there is a testing uh, is probably less the medical facilities are also not as readily available so that is a cause of concern now the moment as i explained that the testing strategy changes and number of tests go much significantly down or significantly up, it will be reflected in our model as a phase change. And therefore, the model can capture it uh, with some time lag. So as of today, what we are seeing is, it's very clearly that the there is another parameter called reach in our model, which measures the fraction of population over which the pandemic is currently active. And that reach has, in some states, gone very rapidly, especially the ones uh, like Uttar Pradesh or Bihar there, which are predominantly rural uh, states, the reach has increased very sharply, reflecting the fact that it has expanded to the rural areas. And uh, we are tracking it continuously. And uh, right now, both UP and Bihar, for example, appear, things appear to be in control. Uh, yes, uh, things are not, uh, uh, let's say totally under control in the rural areas, but uh, still there's not gone out of control, I would say. Uh, rural areas have an inherent advantage that uh, they are less dense, more open. And these are very important factors in uh, naturally controlling the spread of the pandemic. So you're saying that rural areas are not that much at a risk uh, because uh, it is, of course, less dense and uh, there are more open areas. But if the if the virus were to spread, sir, in these areas, uh, these uh, the concern is that the health infrastructure is not adequately, uh, you know, it's not been uh, it's not adapt uh, to uh, the kind of uh, concerns that will emanate if the numbers were to rise. So how should, uh, what are you telling states, what are you telling the government so far as to how should they prepare themselves? No, I don't think that's, that's beyond our expertise. Frankly, we are modelers who can say this is how the trends are. But exactly how to handle such situations, I think it is best done by experts. I'm sure there is a very good set of uh, doctors and other experts who are advising the government on exactly how to handle 
this rural spread. Right. Given the fact that you're saying that the active infections uh, now have peaked, uh, does that mean there's going to be a significant relief coming in for India's health infrastructure? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. What we expect is that by end of this month, uh, the daily new cases should drop well below 2 lakhs per day. And uh, that would... Uh, certainly release a lot of pressure, which currently is there on our health infrastructure. How soon can we expect the daily new cases to drop below the 2 lakh mark, sir? Oh, so within this month, uh, what our expectation is, it will be somewhere close to 1.5 lakhs by uh, end of May. Okay, by end of P, we will see the COVID numbers on a decline significantly. In fact, a possibility of a number hitting the 1.5 lakh mark, as Professor Agrawal is saying. But on that note, sir, I appreciate you taking your time out and speaking with us today at ET Now. And here's hoping that uh, we are finally able to put COVID-19 behind us. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you.